tested. As in portable appliance testing. Although everyone calls it that, the proper name is in-service inspection and testing of electrical equipment. Bit of a mouthful, so I will say pat testing today. Why the change in name? Well, the scope is bigger than things you can pick up. It covers equipment that is not part of the fixed installation, but may not be truly portable. Think a vending machine, a photocopier on casters, a display, fridge, a commercial coffee machine, all live in the real world. All can be damaged and all need inspection and sometimes testing. Whatever you call it, I'm gonna take you through a typical PAT test using the Mega PAT 250 SRX. Legislation places a duty on employers and duty holders to keep electrical equipment safe. The law does not say you must do PAT testing, it says the equipment must not put people at risk. The code of practice gives a framework to show that maintenance is in place and PAT Pat testing is a practical way to do that. Also, equipment does not last forever. Cables get damaged, plugs get wired badly, fuses are wrong, insulation breaks down, and casings crack. A quick user check before use is the first line of defense. Then we use formal inspection and testing to prove it is safe to stay in service. Let us use a simple example, this toaster. This toaster is class one. That means it relies on basic insulation plus an earth connection for safety if a fault occurs. I will explain why each test matters as we go, starting with a visual inspection. Most fails are found here. We look for damage to the flex, cracks in the plug or body, signs of overheating, and we check the fuse. Use the smallest fuse that safely covers the appliance load with a margin. Many small appliances are fine with a three amp. High load heaters often need 13 amps. Replace like for like unless you have confirmed the load. Ours in our toaster looks good, so we move on. The earth continuity test is all about proving that the earth path is intact and has a low resistance. That way, if a live wire ever touches the metal casing, enough current will flow to quickly blow the fuse or trip the RCD before anyone gets hurt. On the PAC 250 SRX, I select class one. Connect the appliance, clip the probe to expose metal and run continuity. A pass would give me a low resistance reading appropriate for the cable length and the appliance type. A fail usually means a loose earth connection, damaged flex or corroded termination. It might also mean that you've not quite connected your earth probe on well enough. If it does fail, it needs to be removed from service and reported. The insulation resistance test checks that there's a very high resistance between the live parts and earth. That confirms that the insulation is doing its job, so a user can't come into contact with dangerous voltage if the insulation ever started to break down. On the PAT 250 SRX, I run the insulation resistance test at 500 volts DC, unless it's sensitive equipment, IT equipment, or has surge protection, in which case I'll run the test at 250 volts DC. A high reading shows insulation is healthy and the insulation is in good condition. A fail would usually mean a damaged cable, moisture inside, crushed insulation or contamination. If you do get a fail, remove from service and report it. The leakage current test is done with the appliance powered on because some faults only show up under normal operation. Certain appliances, especially IT equipment, include EMC filters that create a small intentional discharge leakage current to earth. So seeing a little is expected. With the PAT 250 SRX, I power up the toaster and measure its leakage. For a simple class one toaster, we should get almost nothing. If the reading was high, that would point to a breakdown in insulation or an internal fault and the appliance would need to be removed from service and reported. Throughout every test, the PAT 250 logs results straight into the Cert Suite app over Bluetooth. That means no handwritten note, no transcription errors, and a professional report ready for the duty holder at the end. What I found really useful is that I could run the test directly from the Cert Suite app. I could tag each asset, take photos of the appliances as I went, and those images became part of the record. By the time I'd finished, the full report was already built and ready to hand over, with every test, every pass or fail, and even a picture of the item tested. So that's a typical class one appliance tested and 
past. But not every piece of equipment relies on an earth connection for safety. Different appliances are built in different ways and that changes the tests we need to carry out. Class 2 appliances use double or reinforced insulation instead of an earth connection. The extra insulation gives the user that second layer of protection because there's no earth. Because there's no earth, our testing focuses on the insulation resistance to make sure that the protection is still intact. Class 2 FE looks the same at first glance as double insulated, but with one important difference. It includes a functional earth. That earth isn't there for shock protection. It's usually there to reduce interference in audio or IT equipment. For safety, we test it just like a class two appliance, but we make a note of that functional earth in the records. Class three appliances take a different approach. They rely on a supply at extra low voltage, such as self or PELV, so the voltage itself is safe. Here, our role is to confirm that the supply is within the correct limits and that the equipment is operating safely. If you have 10 items, you can normally manage that on paper, but if you have 100, you really are going to want this app. Cert Suite timestamps every test, ties results to each asset and builds the report. That is what the duty holder needs to show maintenance is in place. So our toaster has passed. At this stage, you might be thinking, do I need to stick a nice green label on it? Well, that's another myth of pat testing. And the answer to that, along with a few more common misconceptions, is covered in this video on screen now.